Shalom, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, before we get this epistle started, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to our beloved Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, our beloved Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechakwadash. Double honors as always to the apostles, the elders, and the sincere Akim of great millstone who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you're here for bearing the sincere citations as always to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, as well as the speckled word among that number, which are the Hebrews like foreigners scattered among the heathen that look like the heathen and shabbat shalom all right uh for this epistle right here i'm going with the title through the spirit and power of Bash Miao Shah of you have to get over yourself all right and the reason why i'm getting this uh this epistle is because um uh something that was said by the blood brother shapar the 12 during his uh, his live camp all right he was getting into how he was getting into the contrast between how he was in the world where at one point in his, uh, in his past, he had actually heard um, the apostles and the elders and the Arkham of Great Millstone at the main camp uh, preaching on the highways and the byways. But at that time, you know, he didn't think anything of it. He just think, he just figured, oh, you know, whatever. It's, it's those guys again. You know, basically the same spirit that a lot of us had when we were still in the world. And the brother, he, uh, he expounded upon it. He expounded upon that point, you know, and it was uh it was beautifully done because he gets into the point of how Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah hadn't called him yet. All right, and that's the case with a lot of us. All right, and I recall in my very first video, you know, I, I got into how, <clears throat> you know, I, I you know I constantly think about it like Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah. He'll have you read the Bible, but the comprehension won't be opened up to you until he decides to call you into this truth, proving once again how spiritual this um this heritage of ours truly is. All right. Even when, you know, it just it's not one of those things that you just you just wake up one day, you start a religion. We didn't start um, worshiping Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai. The, the Lord called us to worship him. You know, even in the times of our forefathers, he called them to worship him. They didn't just wake up one day and, oh, I know I, I'm going to make a religion uh, called such and such. No, no. Nah, the Heavenly Father called our people. All right. And the spirit bears witness. And I'm going to get that priest up. Uh, in a minute, I don't want to write but the first precept I wanted to start off with was the book of Matthew, chapter 16, I believe. And it should be verse 19. Uh, Salakia. It's not that one right there, but let me go ahead and type it in this way. Ye have not chosen. Have not chosen. Uh, the Wadi Halbash me shot. I had it wrong. Is the book of John, chapter 15, verse 16, and it reads, Ye and this is rare letter, so it's Lord Yahweh Shah speaking, whom the word me calls Jesus Christ. All right. Um, yeah, I'll start at verse 15. So John chapter 15, verse, I'll start at verse 14. It's lucky. John chapter 15, verse 14, and it reads, Ye are my friends. And this is rare letter, so it's Lord Yahweh Shah speaking. Ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. And that's beautiful because the Lord, he one of the main things he's, he's made uh, known unto us that he's seen of his Father is the destruction of Babylon the Great, the U.S. of A., all right? Whereas most Jakes, most uh, so-called biblical uh, Hebrew Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans in the speckled bird, you know, particularly of the th of the two third number, they would hear this and they would bug out. All right, they they wouldn't be able to accept that um, America, Babylon the Great, is going to be destroyed by way of ICBM nuclear missile destruction, and that is indeed the Lake of Fire. All right, and it's probably one of the reasons why two thirds of our people cleave onto this lie of um, what do you call it, Salakia. It's probably another reason why two thirds of our people cleave onto this lie of a uh, hell being some spiritual place where you go where your spirit goes and burns for all of eternity which is bugged out because the heavenly father's made it clear through the scriptures that your spirit is a fire okay and anyway he wouldn't be a merciful power if he uh left you to burn for all eternity for your sins if there was no way of um no way of repentance but anyway verse 16 ye have not chosen me but i have chosen you and i ordained you that ye should go forth, so like that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you, that ye love one another. Amon. So right here, the Heavenly Father, 
Yahweh Bash Me Shah, he's revealing through his only begotten son, Lord Yahweh Shah, whom the world ignorant calls Jesus Christ, and Yahshua and Yeshua and all these other bugged out names, is Yahweh Shah, all right? He's revealing to us that he's called us into this, okay? We we didn't wake up one day and just choose this, all right? The Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bash Me Shah, he chose us to do this. And then when he when he, you can see the difference between when he chose you and when he Salakia. When he called us versus um you know, before he called us. Before he called us, we would just read the Bible just like we would read any other book of philosophies and, and uh, Proverbs and stuff like that. We wouldn't take, we would read it, but it, wouldn't, it really wouldn't um, register in our spirit the way that it should, if that makes sense, or, you know, for lack of a better term. So, you know, for example, like we would read something like, um, what's a good one? Come, the water y'all about smell shot. We will read a scripture like uh, Jeremiah, I believe that was chapter uh, 55, verse 17. Or well, I think Jeremiah's the 50, verse 17, where it says, No weapon formed against you shall prosper, you know. And you will hear like old church grannies uh, bringing up that scripture without any context, just having you feel like it's just some good, some feel good stuff to say, you know, like, Oh, yeah, baby, no, no, yeah, no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and all this other bull crap, not realizing that it goes deeper than just what you're saying because. Granny doesn't realize that uh, America, Babylon the Great, is going to be destroyed by ICBM nuclear missile destruction. Like ICBM nuclear nuclear missile destruction. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai. You know, the one she calls God and his only begotten son, whom she calls Jesus, they're going to destroy this place. This place is going to be a glass floor. All right. <clears throat> Granny doesn't realize that, so she just tells you these things, you know, as some feel good, but as we get in the book of Ezekiel the second chapter let me go ahead and get that real quick all right Ezekiel the second chapter and I'm gonna pick up at a uh, verse oh it's lucky. I picked I got Joel let me get Ezekiel chapter 2 Ezekiel the second chapter and I'm gonna pick up at verse 9 and it reads and when I looked behold and hand was sent unto me and lo a roll of a book was therein and he spread it before me, and it was written within and without, and there was written therein lamentations and mourning and woe. All right? And a lot of people don't understand this. A lot of our people don't understand this when they read the Bible. This isn't a book of all, you know, gumdrops and ice cream, you know? And then even when you get into the uh, the sweet aspects of the scriptures, it only pertains to the true biblical Hebrew Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. All right? Our people being uh, rewarded double for their shame. You know, their troubles and roughly paraphrasing, you know, um, the heathen going into captivity after having our people as, a, as um, in captivity. The heathen being a spoil unto us after them making us a spoil, so forth and so on. OK, and you won't you won't receive this knowledge. You know, you won't even have a chance of receiving this knowledge unless your how boss me out shot puts a spirit on you to be humble and just listen. You got to get over yourself, man. You got to realize that before you came into this truth, you didn't know shit. Before you came to this truth, you was believing that you knew it all. You was just a high and mighty Christian or, or Muslim or whatever bullshit you was into, worshiping the ancestors, being the voodoo and all this other bullshit, Santeria, all right, uh, Catholicism. You was in all these other bullshit ass false ways, and you was out here believing uh, Esau, Edom, the self proclaimed so called white man, that you evolved from monkeys, that all humans evolved from monkeys, and that this ass clown is at the top of that food chain, which is bugged out. But when the Heavenly Father tells you, the, uh, the, the story of uh, the, the genesis of our people in the book of Genesis, it, it becomes too hard for Jake to re it becomes too hard for Jake to accept, you know. And one thing that uh, came to my remembrance of uh, when the beloved elder apostle Gabar, uh, I was watching the video done by him and the beloved elder apostle of Ramlaw, it was done three years ago, and it was on the, pro on the topic of uh, prostitution since Jake is always so damn weak, all right. The elders massively, the uh, elder apostles massively broke down how, um, how it's lawful for uh, it's not against the law for a jake man to deal with a harlot roughly paraphrasing but anyway i'll put that video in the description box but the point that i'm trying to make is the elder apostles they brought out a point of how you have to if you're going to call yourself a man of the lord you first have to be a man all right me and men they not um men are not rooted in their emotions men are rooted in reality all right and i believe the elder said something along the lines of uh becoming something about becoming a student of reality Okay, and that's real important because a lot of our people they're stuck in delusion. Like people, like our people, they 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 will. Um, what's the word I want to use? Our people will basically walk around as soon as you tell them the truth of the scriptures. As soon as you tell them, uh, uh, yes, Joseph had sex with Mary. 
uh, the first thing they'll say, you know, they'll be walking around like the um, the the flailing, you know, inflatable arm flailing tube man or something like that. As soon as you tell them the truth, they're like, "Oh no, that's sacrilege! Oh no, not my Jesus, man! Look, Jesus don't even fucking exist, man. Chill out." Second off, and I got and this is personal experience. Recently, I was talking to this um, I was talking to this Eve, basically, just you know, briefly talking to her, you know. And then, you know, I texted her and I basically, you know, she was talking about like, you know, the church and stuff like that. And I asked her, um, she said something about uh, so-called Jeebus. And I asked her, what language is that? And she said, I don't know. So there you go. If you ask any, and that's a, that's a topic right there, you know, and it's a topic that the Apostles and the others, they've already touched upon on countless occasions, I'm sure. But, you know, it's a topic right there for brothers to touch, to touch back upon, you know, like what language is Jesus even in? Because, you know, you ask these questions, you have to know these things, man. You have to know these things. If if somebody asks, if one of these uh, damn Edomites ask our people about some damn um, some damn uh, Alexander the Greek, you know what will they say? Oh, he was a Macedonian. Uh, what does Alexander mean? You can probably go into a breakdown of what Alexander mean. You can okay. Well, Alexander is the, is you know it's a, a English version of the Greek word Alexander something something. Woo woo woo. Okay. Now when you go to um, what's something else? You look up a uh, Genghis Khan. Okay, if, if, if an Edom might ask us about that in school, our people will say, okay, well, he was Mongolian, and Genghis is a Mongolian title for such and such and such and such, and Khan is a, you know, but when you ask about uh, uh, Jeebus, the world's supposed Lord and Savior, the world can't even tell you what the fuck Jesus means. But the elders and apostles of Great Millstones, through the spirit and power of your how bosh me on shot, I've been telling you for years what our Lord's true name is, okay? telling you that our lord was a hebrew israelite man born of a man going in unto a woman and impregnating her born under the seed of abraham of the tribe of judah and jake just cannot seem to understand that he was born into a particular culture and lineage our lord was born to a hebrew israelite family of the circumcision of the Israelites, not the uncircumcision, meaning the circumcision was not into any heathen customs whatsoever. They were what you would call, um, what's the word for it? Not Puritans, but they were purists, so to speak, if you want to get technical, meaning they only dealt with their culture. They didn't, they didn't mix cultures, man. They understood our laws, statutes, and commandments. The Bible is not an all-inclusive type of book, okay? The Holy Scriptures is exclusive to the hebrew israelites now heathen will be mentioned in the book but that doesn't mean it's for them it's just basically giving us a historical account of certain encounters with these heathen but the point is you have to get over yourself to really understand the bible is not for everybody now let me get that precept i didn't you know spoke enough for a minute let me see something uh proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 and it reads trust in the lord yahweh bash me on shot with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding and all thy and all so like in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear Yahweh and depart from evil. All right. <clears throat> and I got a priest at the time of that, the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter five, verse one, and it reads, Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of the most high Yahweh Bashmiel Shah, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they consider not that they do evil. All right. Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thy heart be hasty to utter anything before the most high for the most high is in heaven and thou art upon earth therefore let thy words be few right because a lot of these weak ass jakes for those that will stop and you know stop passing the men of the lord on the highways and the byways and ask questions they'll seem interested but then one little one little truth of the pre of the scriptures will have these dudes walking away with like uh with uh the beloved elder manata zakba calls it crushed nuts you know, all of, all of a sudden, Jake gets wounded in the stones when they hear the truth about the precepts. But you were just sitting right there hoofing that hot shit about how you was a Christian. So now that the, the truth of the precepts, the truth of the scriptures get brought out, you all of a sudden offended. But you can't dispute or gainsay anything that the true men of your how about me on shy are saying. And they're coming straight out the scriptures. You coming out your own emotions. And the scriptures speak about how the heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? Roughly paraphrasing. And the Hebrew word for heart is love, which means your mind. Your mind can think a lot of crazy ass things, man. Even if you in the world, even before your how boss me on shot calls you, there's certain things that there's certain thoughts you may have that you rebuke 
maybe not in the, in the name of Yahweh Bash Miao Shah, but the Lord put the Spirit on you to rebuke certain thoughts because it's not those thoughts are not geared towards the Spirit that He gave you. Okay, so that right there is another testament to how wicked the mind is. Sometimes the mind can have you thinking doing some stupid crap that is no good for you that you know is no good for you, like like going out to a going out to a place that you know that your kind isn't liked or trying to uh, be around people you know doesn't like you. These are all thoughts that are subject to the all thoughts that you subject to under the flesh. All right. And this is another reason why we need the kingdom of heaven, which we're not going to, you know, Jake's that don't adhere to the 144 percent doctrine. They're not going to be in the kingdom of heaven, man. It, it's, it's as far as the sense of like they're not going to inherit the kingdom of heaven on the first go round. And the two thirds will be in the kingdom through the loins of the elect. They'll have to get it on the second go round, which is not the same. Um, it's not the same honor as the as the uh the one third all right the one third will be the ones who inherit the kingdom so it may seem like a stumbling block but that's the point of the precepts man our lord is meant to be a stumbling block unto the wicked so when he said uh you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven or you should not inherit the kingdom of heaven all those precepts really mean is you will not um get there on the first go round <clears throat> it's basically like first come first serve so the first israelites that enter into the kingdom of heaven that's the rulership in the kingdom of heaven Israelites will rule the heathen automatically, but those Israelites that enter into the kingdom of heaven on the first go round, those Israelites rule even over the other Israelites. Okay, so yeah, the, indeed, the two thirds will not be in a rulership position in the kingdom of heaven where it matters. It goes without saying you'll rule over a heathen. A heathen is nothing to rule over. But as far as the, the, the judges of the earth, oh no, nah, you'll be under those judges of the earth. When the law tells you, thou shalt not revile the gods, let me go ahead and get that real quick. I believe it's Exodus chapter 22, verse 28. And it reads, the water you have Thou shalt not revile the gods, nor curse the rule of thy people. All right? So that gets in how our people, they always gainsay, mock, and talk stuff because they're in their feelings. But you got to get out your feelings that get this wisdom, man. Let me see. Um, the meat. Uh, the meat shall eat and shall be satisfied. The meat shall get. There we go. The water you have about shot. This is the book of Proverbs. Chapter, so like it. Psalms chapter 25, verse 9. And it reads, The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. Right? And the meek are going to be the elect of the nation of Israel, which is why the scripture says, If it was possible, they would deceive the very elect, but the elect cannot be deceived. All right? And like the beloved brother Shepard the 12 masterfully brought out. All right? He brought it out masterfully. The elect won't be deceived, but things still have to play out, which is the elect will still have to hear the correct doctrine, and then they'll be activated. They're not going to just waltz into the kingdom. Nobody is, all right? But that's the point, man. If you're not meek, you're going to be stuck in your own ways. You're going to be doubting everything you see. And and the, the worst part, you'll be doubting your Bash Me Shai's works and his miracles and the men that he sent to, uh, to teach you the word. So you'll miss it unless he's called you, unless he's chosen you to be one of his elect to receive his word. But hopefully this lesson was edifying and exhorting to the elect of the nation of Israel, to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. Once again, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to our beloved Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, our beloved Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechak, Wadash, double honors as always to the apostles, the elders, and the sensei Akim of Great Millstone, who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you're here for bearing the sincere citations as always to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. As well as the speckled bread among that number, which are the Hebrews like foreigners scattered among the heathen that are like the heathen. Kwame Asharala and the Baba Ball. We almost out of here. Adawan Rathaza. We got next Adawan Rathaza. Shema Yasha Allah, Yahweh, Allah Hayanawa, Yahweh, Achad. Shabbat Shalawan.